Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15, where I'll be giving you three of my best tips for tomorrow's racing, where we'll be focusing on the first day of the international meeting at Cheltenham. Now before I get into that, I've just got a couple of announcements to make. First of all, if you haven't done so already, make sure you listen to the latest In The Saddle podcast. I am actually recording this video before I've even recorded the latest episode of the In The Saddle podcast, because I've uh, had to record it tonight and I couldn't record it earlier with the gang. But if you're watching this video from around about 9pm onwards, uh, you'll hopefully see links in the description box below where we've got all the podcast platforms covered including Spotify, iTunes and SoundCloud. And I'm going to be joined by uh, my co-host Mark Karoski, also as well Katie Clements and Paul Callahan, who's uh, uh, a finalist in the, the Race and Tipster uh, TV competition. So uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, discussing the weekend's racing and then at Cheltenham. So if you want to listen to that, just make sure you hit one of the links in the description box below. Like I said, it'll be up hopefully after 9 p.m. But uh, also as well, I quickly want to recap on the selections um, on how they performed today. In the end, it's not been a bad day for us. It's been a bit of a mixed bag. We do still have one selection to go and that really does hinge if today was a profitable day or not. We had a next best winner at, uh, at a Newcastle with Malistic for Brian Hughes and Peter Niven. I thought Brian Hughes gave this one a really good ride from the front. There was one or two moments during the race where I thought, oh, he might just be coming back to the rest of them. But in the end, he was able to pull out more in the closing stages. And he won that off a mark of 137. And if you're the handicapper, you've got to be rating him now probably nearly up to 145. And he looks like he really should be stepping into greater company on this next start. He'd probably have to. Not sure if he would end up in a race like the Arkle. Probably wouldn't be good enough to make the frame in an Arkle, but you would definitely have to respect him. And uh, I think uh, a step up in gra grade now is what's needed for him. He's got some good form in the bag from some of his earlier runs in his career. He was a good hurdler, good bump horse as well. And I think it's time uh, they stepped him up in grade. So yeah, Malistic, one to uh, keep on side potentially next time out. So that was a nice winner for us there. The Nap uh, Glanju was quite disappointing in the end at Taunton. Had every chance, wasn't slick at one or two of his fences when he had to be, and that probably just cost him in the end. He finished in third place. So that was a little bit frustrating there. And then the other selection, Palmer's Hill, uh, who ran um, earlier today at Taunton, who was very well gambled on, went off around about 11 to eight favorite in the end. I don't think he was helped by the fact that they took out half the jumps down the back straight. I think he's a horse that really would uh, benefit from jumping those fences and he would come into his own. But in the end, it just turned out to be a three mile flat race. And again, the angle in, looking in at horses that have done well in bumpers in these races now that are just becoming a bit of a joke and and uh, they're, where they're hardly jumping any fences. Looking at bum forms actually worked out all right because I uh, backed Keeper Hill and Lakeview Lad the other day in the many clouds because they were the only horses that had ever ran in bumpers and won bumpers. So uh, yeah, that, that angle turned in to be quite juicy. And again, the, the horse that won today of Nicky Henderson's, he'd won a bumper on his first ever start. So maybe that is an angle in. But uh, yeah, disappointing there, Palmer's Hill. Like I said, we've still got one selection to go tonight, which runs in the five o'clock at Chelmsford. He's been actually quite well back. Back. That's big country for uh, Mick Appleby in the colours of the horse watchers. Really expecting a good run from him tonight. We put him up at 5-1 to one last night, so fingers crossed we can get a winner there. I and mean, it means it would have been a profitable day for us if he does go and win. So fingers crossed uh, we get a winner in that race at Chelmsford. But let's get into the tips for tomorrow, what you're all watching for. Uh, where, like I said, we've got three of my best tips tomorrow coming from the first day of the international meeting at Cheltenham. And for the first tip tomorrow, we're going to be going in the 12.05. What looks like a cracking... Uh, a little novices chase there but I thought hold the note represented quite a bit of value currently backable at 72 for Tom Scudamore and Mick Shannon now this horse um if you've been following my work for some time you'll know that I was all over him for the uh, for the novices handicap chase at the Cheltenham festival uh back in March where um he ran a really respectable race to finish in third place I put him up and we got the each way money, but I was really keen on his chances because he had shown some really good form when he finished second at Warwick and he was travelling like a dream at Kempton when he was brought down through no fault of his own. Uh, the horse in front of him fell that day and in the end uh, unseated uh, Johnny Burke, who I think that was on board. So yeah, a bit frustrating there. And I think we're, we're really yet to see the best of him over fences. That form as well, I should mention, of that uh, novice's handicap chase, the Northern Trust work, has worked out very well. Obviously, the first two uh, were Imperial Laura, who's now a grade two winner in his own right. 
and also as well Galvin who is now favourite for the National Hunt Chase at the next Cheltenham Festival so yeah a lot of good form lines there so far this season he's ran okay probably maybe not quite lived up to expectations but I think he just needs a couple of runs to come to his own um his uh, first start of the season saw him finish fourth at Weatherby where uh, he ran behind Sham Blue who's a really exciting prospect for the Skeltons in that race you actually have Snow Leopardess of uh, Charlie Longston come out and boost the form on her next start when she won a uh, very competitive staying handicap at Haylock a few weeks ago. So there is some substance to that form. And on ratings, he's officially uh, the best horse in the lineup, and he's going to be receiving weight from all of them. So at the weights tomorrow, he's quite well in. He gets five um, pounds from uh, Kim Bailey's horse, who I do think is a little bit short in the betting. Probably the biggest danger, in my opinion, in, in my opinion is the Colin Tizad horse. But with the yard being in poor form, I can't really be putting up too many of their horses with any confidence. So for me, I thought hold the note here represented a little bit of value tomorrow i think a lot of people will con on, cotton on to the fact that he's well treated here at the weight and i think he uh, i think he'll go very close tomorrow so he's just gonna be an extra tip he's not gonna be an app or an ex best but i thought he would run a really good race for us and fingers crossed we can get off to a flying start there we then go to the grade three handicap with my next selection and this is the nap of the day and i thought he was a little bit of a, of a biggish price here uh, in the context of this race. It's a grade three handicap, the 225. I thought Black Court and Fabrani and Paul Nichols could be the way to play here. He's currently 9-2 in the betting at the time recording. I'm making this video around about five o'clock. So uh, that, that that's the current price at the time recording. But this horse, we, we there's not much we don't know about him, you know. Uh, he's been in the game now for obviously a few seasons and really been one of uh, Barani Frost's pioneering horses in her career. She's got a great relationship with him. Uh, I think grade one winners together when they won the quarter star our novices chase uh, back in uh, 2017 and ever since he uh, came out of novice company he has just found it really hard to maybe run at the top level in graded races but he's been able to run some good races still during his career won a few more and he's done well off big weights in some handicaps and even last season he was showing ability still he finished second in a grade three handicap a very good one where he went down fighting to Mr Malarkey at Kempton he finished second at Galway over in Ireland last year you know and he does definitely in my opinion still retain ability he finished um fourth on his seasonal reappearance uh, at uh, ascot in the sodexo uh, gold cup which wasn't a bad run where he probably needed it that day and it was very testing ground and also as well he did unseat last time out in the christie's chase won by imperial aura when he was being asked for a little bit of an effort so he maybe has one or two question marks to answer but i thought this was the easiest race he, he's running for quite some time and he's well capable in my opinion of defining top weight we know his style of running he likes to be forward he likes to be handy and really uh, put his jump into good use his jumping like i said at ascot last time was a little bit untidy so that's why they've reached for cheap pieces tomorrow and i just think if they sparkle him up sparking him up a little bit he could definitely be a major player in this race and for me i think he should be a lot shorter in the better and i thought a nine to two represented quite a bit of value and i like i said don't think this is a particularly strong race i think there's a lot of exposed types in here probably the favorite court made is the one that is still um climbing an upward curve and maybe does have the potential to uh, win a race of this nature but i just thought black horn tomorrow with those chic pieces could be very dangerous and is not to be underestimated and i really do fancy his chances tomorrow i think Bryony can get uh get out there in front and dictate things commodore might be the other horse that would like to go forward but commodore in my opinion i wouldn't be touching him with a barge pole I'll probably go and win now but uh, for me commodore isn't my cup of tea so uh black court in there is gonna be my nap of the day in the 225 and i think he'll go really close we then go in the 335 the final race on the card for the next best and i thought on the blind side here could be the way to play for Nico de Boinville riding for champion trainer Nicky Henderson. You currently back him at 4 to 1 at the current time of recording. Now, I remember a couple of seasons ago, I really um, fell in with this horse. Um, I really backed him uh, for absolutely everything. I thought he was going to be a top chaser. But for some unknown reason, he just didn't seem to uh, go to those heights that I thought he might do. You know, he was a good hurdler and he did OK uh, for quite a few races over fences. But last season, he really started going on a downward curve and Nicky found him some winning opportunities. I remember I actually um, uh, was standing nearby uh, Nicky at Kempton when he finished third, I think on Lanzarote Hurdle Day. And uh, he said, there's no excuses today. He said he should be winning this and typical on the blind side he found a way to get a beat however he did go and win a bumper 
uh, an all-weather bumper on one of those meetings at Newcastle uh, next time out. And then um, last time we saw him on his seasonal reappearance, he ran over hurdles off a mark of 145, and he did really well that day to dig deep on ground that probably wasn't that ideal for him. But I think if you're looking at horses in this field and you're thinking who's going to progress and maybe run in the stairs hurdle i think this guy could you know i still think he has a few pounds up his sleeve off his uh, mark tomorrow for 150 still think he could easily be rated in my opinion up to 155 which would mean he would have to probably take his chance in a graded company next time out but i think he's well capable of defying uh, this mark nikki's horses are running okay at the moment as well so uh, there's no uh, nothing to really worry about there. Okay, I know they had a disappointing weekend last weekend, but they had a winner at Taunton today, and they had another winner as well at Etoxeter earlier in the week. So they're going okay at the moment. And I just thought this horse really was probably one of the classes in the field. And if you had to say, is there a horse in here that could maybe, at an outside price, maybe run well in the stairs hurdle, it probably would be this lad. And I think he's got a bit more to come. And uh, I was really impressed the way he dug deep last time out. Like I said, un unsuitable ground there should be a little bit of rain around tonight but i don't think it's going to be affecting the ground too much i i expect it to be probably good to soft tomorrow and no worse um it's going to be quite dry over the next couple of days at cheltenham so that's kind of the ground you're looking at and i think on the blind side can go and get another cheltenham win so yep yeah, they're the three tips for tomorrow's rating and i'm hoping for a good day there so let's quickly just recap through them then uh the extra tip of the day runs in the 1205 at cheltenham that's hold the note the nap is in the 225 with black to nine to two win only bet and then in uh 335 the final race of the day we go on the blind side and that's four to one uh win only bet so yeah they're the three tips for tomorrow's racing if you're enjoying these videos please remember Remember to hit the subscribe button also as well if you're enjoying them really appreciate all the support you give me remember to uh, like them and give them a thumbs up if you want to fo follow me on social media that's the best place to do so where my handle is at lucky loader 15 and if you want to find out a little bit more about myself and my work just go to my website which is www.chrisloaderacing.co.uk so please gamble responsibly hopefully we can have uh, a couple of winners tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon